死は全く怖くない一番恐れるのはこの怒りがやがて風化してしまわないかということだ Kurapika Curtis' character has always been fascinating to me. When I consider why, his conviction sets him apart from any other character I can think of. He has unmatched resolve, and his fury has no bounds or limits. And Togashi weaves his in combat abilities to reflect his resolve and anger, as well as his journey, which makes me appreciate him even more. Kurapika's allure begins with his unique design. His androgynous appearance, beginning with his lengthy blonde hair, the chain user is rather small and skinny in size, with a single earring and large eyes. Kurapika's face doesn't have any sharp, powerful lines in his design that suggest aggression or strength. With that, upon first view, Kurapika struck me as someone gentle, kind, and unassuming, when he is in fact one of the most calculated, careful, and observant characters in the show. He approaches situations with logic and facts and always has contingencies for whatever matter presents itself. His morality and values are strict and rigid, and he does everything to uphold the Kurta name. The way he carries himself and even the way he speaks is with grace, caution, and an air of self respect. Every last word is calculated. And Kurapika, while being cold and distant, has shown the ability to care and to open up. But underneath an unassuming gaze hides fury like none other. And he juxtaposes all of these traits with a sometimes reckless abandon, confidence, and power behind his small frame. We all know Kurapika's backstory member of the Kurta clan who was slaughtered a few years prior by the Phantom Troop. And his only goal is to seek vengeance and to retrieve the scarlet eyes of his people. But what sets Kurapika apart from many vengeance driven characters is that resolve and determination. Kurapika will stop at absolutely nothing to fulfill his goal, and when you couple that with his intellect, he becomes one of the scariest characters in the series. Above it all, that resolve is brought to life with his Nen contract, as Kurapika is willing to sacrifice his life if it means he can have the strength to face the troop. Kropika's path is one that has true consequences, and if he continues, the consequence will be self destruction. His goal is simple and easily digestible, but when looking at it a little further, it makes the chain user so interesting, as we understand to what lengths he will go to in order to reach his goal, and questioning whether or not those lengths are worth the loss of self. While the bulk of Kropika's story comes in the York New City arc, the bits of Kropika's scarlet eyes that were showcased in the Hunter exam highlights the slow descent into rage. Specifically, the way he felt uneasy after his anger got the best of him against Majitani with the fake spider tattoo, which displayed his initial feelings towards the spiders, but also how his resolve always pushed those feelings to the side. It also shows the first of three shown phases of Kropika's descent, this being the young Kurta dipping his toes into the water. The York New City arc really showcased Kropika's personality. The chain user who has so much confidence in not only his abilities but in his own rage, as he faces the physically strongest member of the troop alone and digging Uvogin's grave beforehand. And his reaction to killing the spider is quite similar to the one against Majtani. When looking at the troop, and specifically Krolo, the boss is Kropika's foil and really elevates his character. What is most glaring when comparing and contrasting the two is that Kropika prefers to be alone while Krolo puts the utmost importance on the spiders. But further than that, Kropika has very specific goals and ideals. He wants to chain the spiders down and retrieve his kinsmen's eyes. And all of the work he's done is towards that one goal. But Krolo and the troop have no tangible goal or motivation. They do as they want and as they please. They don't have morals or values, except for following the rules of the troop and protecting one another. To them, killing or stealing carries no weight, and Kropika cannot understand that, as he is someone who is incredibly logical in how he approaches situations. More than that, his values and strict morals are ones that are crafted by the Kurta, and that's evident by looking at his many interactions, most notably in the Hunter exam. Which further points the dissonance between Kurolo, the troop, and Kurapika. Notice as he questions Pakunoda and Uvogin. You haven't asked any questions. 
Aren't you worried? You don't find this deal unreasonable? How can you commit such atrocities and not feel anything? How is it possible? Answer me! He is in constant pursuit to fundamentally understand why and how the spiders function. And even to Krollo, he asks, What are you? What are you people? Kropika cannot fathom that the spiders don't have an ulterior motive instead of taking what they want. Some of them love combat, others might not revel in it as Uvo did, but they all value each other. And as Melody points out, for that section of the York New City arc, Kropika and Pakunoda are driven by the same thing, to save their friends. And while I'm sure Kropika knows this, again he can't fathom that these monsters have a sense of humanity. And comparing that same chain user to the one we see by the end of the anime, Kropika is farther away from Gon, Kilua, and Leorio than he has ever been, not even checking up on Gon when he was hospitalized. But Kurolo's philosophy has always been on survival of the whole and not the individual. Aside from that, Kurolo is an emblem of calm and composure, and even in danger, never loses his front while Kurapika has fits of rage and uncontrollable anger. I think that sometimes Kurapika feels that the aid of others will strip him of the purity of his rage and might even quell it. And while I haven't read much of the manga, I do know that Kurapika has lost his best friend, which is what this scene alludes to. And so Kurapika fears that he might lose his friends again, especially when Gon, Kilua, and Leorio get involved. And considering everything that Gon has done for him, and everything he has sacrificed for Kurapika, including all of those moments in the Hunter exam, which explains the chain user's willingness to put his goals aside for them. And I think it's that very reason why he distanced himself from the duo, for the same reasons that he didn't want them getting involved in the first place. That attachment is very difficult for him, and might remind him of worse times while also impeding his goal. Gon means a lot to Kurapika, and that's evident, but he's always been somebody who, when his mind is made up about a goal, he pursues it until the very end. And when the final episode of the anime does show Kurapika, he looks more determined than ever, having retrieved more of the Scarlet Eyes. For a short moment in the York New City arc, when the Phantom Troop was believed to be dead, Kurapika seemed to begin undergoing the process of grieving properly. And that moment had me questioning the type of person Kurapika could become, and what a journey of finding his kinsman eyes without the task of killing the troop would look like, as he shared a laugh with Gon and Kilua. It was a moment where Kurapika felt emptiness, and it really hammered the idea that Kurapika doesn't have a purpose in life if it isn't avenging his clan. But it was a moment of peace, while brief, it showed him that he could move on and start healing, because of the four by his side, including Melody. But as the spiders proved to be alive, his hatred seemed to be renewed and even stronger, which makes the young Kurta's story that much more interesting. Krapika is in a prison of his own hatred, and his absolute need for vengeance has made him believe that this path is the only way to redeem himself to his fallen people as he has no purpose if it isn't tied to the Kurta and their eyes. What is also interesting to me is Kurapika's self-awareness. Let's not forget that this is one of the smartest characters in the series. He is fully aware of what he is doing, and the toll that it's taking on him. But he knows that this is something he must do. Like he says to Uvo, it makes him sick. It's exhausting for Kurapika to carry this sorrow but his rage has no bounds and almost acts like a second personality. His rage is all he knows. When I think of a masterfully crafted and tragic story of vengeance, I think of Kurapika. And as I look forward to seeing him again, I'm curious to see where his story will take him, and if it will end in his own death. If his rage will carry him against the troop, or if it will quell over time. And if it doesn't, I think about the kind of state that Kurapika will be in. I think about if he will have completely drowned in fury and lost himself. Or if and how he will manage to find a true purpose in his life. Something crafted and willed by his own mind and his own resolve, not formed by unprocessed grief. If he wants to truly honor the Kurta, 
is this the way? Or is it in living the way they were? Or moving on how they want him to? York New City showed us that Kurapika, while descending into dangerous territory, still has his humanity. And he showed that respect to Uvo, giving him a burial, and always honoring his deals with Krolo and Pakunoda. But the Kurapika we see at the end of the series, the one who didn't visit Gon who nearly died, is quite out of character of the Kurapika we once knew. It looks like he has been completely overtaken by his vengeance. Because the Kurapika of the York New City arc, or of the Hunter exam especially, would have been by Gon's side. Because Gon risked his life for Kurapika, and proved his dedication to his friend's cause by being willing to have a Nen dagger around his heart, that Kurapika would have no doubt been by Gon's side, as a thanks. Because again, Kurapika carries a strict code of honor and respect. But at the end of it all, Kurapika is the lone survivor of the Kurta clan, and he feels so much anger and sadness. He's in so much pain and feels as though this is the path to healing. But that path to the light has shown itself in those around him, and I think that deep down he knows that. But the feelings of determination and of vengeance tend to take over Kurapika's mind. Kurapika has this inner war between serenity and rage, as well as solitude and company. He knows what he's doing will destroy him, but he can't stop. And he knows that Gong, Kilua, Leorio, and Melody are all in his corner, but he constantly pushes them away. And Kurapika is one of my favorite characters because of that duality, and the thin line he treads between fury and solace in his every appearance. Now you'll know the pain of losing your home. 